All right, welcome back to Salt City Counseling. Once again, my name is Scott Carter. I'm a licensed therapist here in the beautiful state of Utah. A little bit of casual mode today. Didn't actually have any therapy appointments today. Didn't see any clients. Uh, so this is just me. And uh, this is feral version of me. Um, <clears throat> in this video, I've got a uh, having to do pertaining to high conflict, high conflict, divorce, and custody. Specifically, I'm going to address the question as to why high conflict BPD mothers lie to court or in court, or why they make up uh, so many lies when it comes to what's going on with the custody case, what's what's going on with you. Uh, what's going on with the children and all kinds of things. And I know that this is a big issue and this is a big question that, that people probably kind of wonder a lot of the time is they wonder why on earth she is fabricating all of these unfounded uh, lies and claims um, and presenting them to court. And this is a this is a complicated thing. It's a long, complicated thing. Uh, there's a lot of nuance here. Uh, one of my primary pieces of pieces of advice if you're trying to understand borderline personality disorder is um, their thinking is not like your thinking. Their mental framework is not like your mental framework. They don't think the way that you do. They don't They don't analyze the way that you do. They don't reason the same way that you do. Um, that's why it's a disorder, uh, frankly, um, and it is. Uh, BPD is a disorder, and uh, they just they don't their brain doesn't function the ways the way that your brain functions they are um, not neurotypical they are neuroatypical or at least in the way that they do things and <clears throat> so what you have to kind of do to understand this is sort of forget a little bit about uh, what it is that you think that you know about how humans think and how humans feel and how humans operate I think there are several things at play here and in, in regards to why they they just seem to bring these um, sometimes really out there and totally unfounded allegations uh, to court. And believe me, I've heard them, man. I, I've heard some, I've heard some allegations um, lobbed at people um, that uh, seemed pretty out there. We're pretty extreme. We're we're um, uh, kind of intense and uh, harmful too, right? Harmful to. The whole situation can be harmful to the kids, harmful to uh, the children's relationship with that other parent. Why? Why do why do BPD moms, high conflict BPD moms, do this? Well, I'm going to present several things here. Um, number one is that um, uh, family court buys it. Uh, family court, as many of you already know, if you're new here, you're going to learn very quickly. I have an extremely low opinion of family court. Um, in an extremely low opinion. Uh, in fact, I think that family court is quite possibly the absolute pinnacle of human stupidity. And um, uh, family court uh, does not examine evidence. Um, they, their, their methods are whimsical and confusing and nonsensical. And um, uh, really, it's, it's, it's more akin. Family court is more akin to like... Alice in Wonderland, like where everybody's just nuts, and and everything they do, they just do for no apparent reason. And, um, do yourself a favor and treat family court this way, and you'll you'll be uh, uh, much much pleasantly surprised if they don't. Uh, but here in my local area, uh, family court um, is glue sniffing dumb. And uh, so, thing is, is uh, <clears throat> with high conflict BPD moms, if they can lob all kinds of accusations into court, um, and and they get traction, and the, and the bottom line is, it works. It just actually works. Uh, they can they can tell the court that you are a parent who is uh, the uh, ringleader of some sort of underground sex trafficking uh, syndicate, and. And the court won't ask for any corroborating evidence. Uh, they could they could uh, bring allegations against you in court, um, saying that you are um, uh, some sort of like maybe you're laundering money, uh, maybe you're uh, doing I mean, all kinds of things. That you're a serial killer. Um, I mean, I've heard some pretty extreme things. Serial killer isn't one of them. But they can say some pretty out there stuff, and family court just goes with it. Oh, they just believe them. And I've even talked to family lawyers and been like, and been like, people lie, you know. And they're like, 
I've never thought of that. <laughs> like, they seem surprised. And it's just like, how can you be this oblivious, like willfully blind to human behavior? And they are. But all that being said, right, is um, well, this is a tactic in court to lob these crazy accusations at you because it works. Because the court doesn't ask for evidence or doesn't, doesn't need or ask for or use any actual evidence. I've provided the court with evidence. Um, I've given, I've, I've made cases for kids in, for, with family court, providing itemized list of evidence, and they just reject it. They just like, no, we, um, we choose Scott to, um, <laughs> to reject your evidence. That's not what we do here. Um, but it works. It works. And so, but, but why are, what are they, what is the BPD mom trying to accomplish? Um, she doesn't want to lose her kids. Um, she's scared to death of losing her kids. I'm convinced of that. And when it comes to family court, she is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that in her mind, because part of BPD is paranoia, is having paranoid thoughts, par par paranoid ideation. Uh, the, the name borderline comes from, right, bordering on neurotic versus psychotic. And part of that psychosis or that psychotic thinking is a detachment from reality. And in this case, right, that uh, that this whole system is just out to get them. And so it really triggers their abandonment. And, and uh, criteria number one in the DSM in regards to borderline has specifically to do with frantic efforts to avoid abandonment. Um, making up all kinds of lies and accusations um, without any basis or any any foundation to them really is it's a, to me it's a frantic effort to abo avoid abandonment. It's just a frantic effort to avoid abandonment, and and they really are right. It like the worst thing that uh, they face, at least in their minds, is the potential for abandonment. And so I think that's, I really do, I really believe that's what motivates them and what drives them. They don't think about you and slandering your reputation. They don't think about the kids and any potential harm that could come to them in the process. They think about their triggered abandonment. What you also have to understand in this case too, is that with BPD, they struggle to always have a firm grasp on what is real and what is true and what is not. Um, those lines can get extremely, extremely blurry. Those emotions in them get so intense and so worked up that it can be very, very difficult for them to, to truly decipher reality versus not reality, right? Neurotic versus psychotic. Uh, psychotic just meaning that we are now in the land of, of um, make-believe where nothing makes sense and we just make up the rules as we go. And... Um, and so for them, they might feel very intensely about something and they're unsure about whether or not that thing is true, right? Like, like they might feel this sense of fear that you're actually harming the children, right? And that fear just, I'm telling you, it, it runs off with them. They have no ability, a lot of them have no ability to meet or regulate that fear, <clears throat> And that fear just takes them for a ride. And, and one of the most important things that we have to understand about BPT, BPD is that feelings are facts. If they feel like it's true, it is true. The more intense the feeling, the more likely it is in their mind to be factual or true, right? And uh, that is a very, very uh, tricky thing to work with. Um, it, is a, it can be a very, very um, challenging and tricky thing to work with. And trying to get them to see or understand that their um, that their feelings are not facts, and we there's a lot of this going around. I feel like in our modern culture too, in which like people's feelings just seem like facts. That the stronger they feel about something, the more certain they are that they are right or accurate or true. And uh, studies have been done on this actually to um, basically examine. Uh, how strongly somebody feels about something versus how accurate they are. And what, what it shows is that the stronger that they feel about something, the less accurate and factual 
right things are and this is just such an important thing to remember with other human beings is that um, they just because they feel strongly about something doesn't mean that it's true or accurate right or correct or or even morally on point right um, and so what you have to understand with, with BPD too is the stronger they feel that something is true, like they may get it into their heads that you are uh, this nefarious, evil person. If you if they feel betrayed by you and you go to villain, then you're going to get all those villain, villainous traits and attributes attached to you, that you're a liar, that you're a thief, that you are dangerous, that you're an abuser, that you are a narcissist, that you're all these things, right? As soon as you're in that villain category, you have now inherited all those attributes, right? And in their minds, if you are uh, moving heaven and earth to take away their kids from them, it's, gonna, it's going to really spark their abandonment. And so while part of me feels like uh, it might be useful, potentially, not really, probably, um, it might be useful, but I doubt it, <laughs> um, to help ensure, right, that their parental rights are, are protected in the process and make it known that I, I have no desire to um, take the kids away from you forever and, um, and uh, have them, you know, destroy the relationship that you have with them so that you no longer have your kids. Um, and if, if they can be reassured in that nature, in that way, Maybe it could be useful, but ultimately, I also know that if that they, it's like, well, there's evidence that says my kids aren't going to be taken, that you're not trying to take away uh, the kids away from me, but my feelings say that you are, so the evidence is gone, <laughs> buy evidence, and, and the emotions are just sort of left in place, um, and so, uh, again, they're back to the frantic efforts to avoid abandonment, and I'm really, really quite certain that is precisely what what drives them to do that so what do you do with all of that it's hard to say it's, it's difficult to say I, I wish that we had a system that upheld truth i wish we had a system that um upheld um evidence and asked for evidence and honored evidence and so and uh, made their decisions based on evidence um sadly with family court yeah at least in my area at least in my area. Evidence? What's that? <laughs> um, I really do have a very low opinion of family court. So anyways, I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps to clear things up. Feel free to ask some additional questions. I like viewer questions. It helps me kind of uh, generate some more viewer content, uh, stuff that uh, people um, really latch on to and that they like. Um, so send me your questions. You can comment in the video. You can email me, scottc at saltcitycounseling.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. See you in the next one.